In this video, we're going to prove what uh, problem 7f here, problem 7f is asking us to do, which was to show that the image of the inverse image of a set C is a subset of that same set C. Um, and we're going to be proving that, but we're going to go beyond a little bit what the question is asking. And we're going to also prove, we're going to also prove that f of the inverse image of C is not equal to C. And to do that, to do that, we're going to, we're going to show we're going to show that f of the inverse image of c does not contain does not contain c that is to say that c is not a subset of the image of the inverse image of c so let's let's first prove what what problem 7f and introduction to analysis by rosenlicht is asking us so this is this is again in the set theory chapter of introduction to analysis by rosenlicht um, and so we're going to do this in the normal way that we're doing it. So, so we're going to we're going to show uh, that f of f inverse of c, the, the the inverse the image of the inverse image of c under f is a subset of c. Is a subset of c. So let's just take any general element. Let's take x to be, or let, rather, since since this an elements in here, this set lies. In the codomain of F, this set lies in Y somewhere in here, right? It lies in the codomain of Y. So we're going to say let Y be in F, the image of the inverse image of C. And if we can prove that any element Y with this property must also be in C, then we prove that all elements in the image of the inverse image of C must also be in C, because every element in the image of the inverse image of C has this property. And therefore, if if every element with this property must be in C, then every element in here, which had, and again, these elements have this property here of being in the image of the inverse image of C must also be in C. Like, if, for instance, every every element, every uh, item in a purse has the has the property of being in a purse. Um, that's just in a quick quick example here. Um, so anyway, so let Y be in the image of the inverse image of C. Then that implies that implies that there exists an X in the inverse image of C such that F of X is equal to Y. And this is hinging on this is hinging on this definition of what it means to be in the image of a set. If I'm in the image of A, then that means I'm one of these Y in the, the domain of F. I'm a Y in the domain of F, such that there exists some X in A, the set that I'm taking the image of, such that F of X is equal to Y. So if I'm in the image of the inverse image of C, and remember the Im inverse image of C is somewhere in here, or it, 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 it's somewhere in the domain. So if the if I'm in the inverse, am I if I'm in the image of the inverse image of C, that means that there exists some x in the inverse image of C, such that such that f of x is equal to to y, or to, to I was saying it in the first person to me, so so in, in to equal to y, directly based on this definition up here. Uh, in other words, f the Im, the image of f of a is the image of all the elements of A mapped over to the codomain. That is, it's the, or in the images of elements in the domain it has to be in, in the codomain. But if I'm in F of A, then I'm in the image of all the elements of A. And that, that set in Y is the image, contains the image of all the elements in, in A. Okay, so moving on here. So if X is in the inverse image of C, or if there, if there exists an X such that X is in the inverse image of C such that F of X is equal to Y, then if X is in, let's, let's think about this right here. Let's think about this statement right here. If X is in the inverse image of C under F, then this implies, this implies that F of X, F of X is in C. F of X is C. And again, this is hinging on this definition of what it means to be in the inverse image of a set C. If I'm in the inverse image of a set C under F, then that means that I'm in X in X such that my image under F is in C. So if I'm 
if this x is in the inverse image of c, then that means it's somewhere in here. It's in the set of elements in the domain x that are mapped by f to c. So x is in the set of elements that are mapped by f to c. That is, f of x is in c. Well, if f of x is in c, remember, f of x, remember, remember that f of x is equal to y. So this implies that y is in c. And we're done. We've just proved exactly what they've asked us to prove. We've, cho we've shown that any y in here, and the image of the inverse image of c, must also be, must also be in c. But now, now, let's prove this statement. Let's prove this statement. We're going to go beyond what the problem asks us to do, and we're going to prove why c is not a subset of the image of the inverse image of c, therefore proving that the, Im the image of the inverse image of c is not equal to c. So let's do that down here. So remember, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prove this by contradiction. I'm going to prove this by contradiction. And we've done this in previous videos, and in fact, we did this in the last video. And this is going to be somewhat similar to what we did in the last video. So suppose, suppose, suppose that F, the image of the inverse image of C, does contain C. That is to say, suppose that C is a subset of the image of the inverse image of C. So suppose that this is true. Well, if this is true, then that means this must be true for all possible cases of F, for all possible cases of F, for all possible cases of the domain of F, X, and for all possible cases of the domain of the codomain Y, and also must be true for all possible C that are a subset of X. So it has to be true for any possible case for what we choose to be F, what we choose to be C, what we choose to be the domain of F, what we choose to be the codomain of F. So let's, if we want to prove this wrong, if we want to prove this statement wrong, then let's try to find a particular case of F such that this case, this statement does not hold. So, suppose, and if we can find a particular case F such that this statement doesn't hold, then we've shown that there exists a particular case such that this statement doesn't hold. Therefore, this statement doesn't always hold. Therefore, we cannot make this claim. Therefore, we cannot make this claim because if you make this claim, then we're saying for all possible cases. So suppose f is not on 2. That means it doesn't, it doesn't map to every single element in C. It doesn't map to every single element in C. So that, that means, and another way of saying this is there exists elements in C such that f of x doesn't map to. So I, I guess a way of visualizing this is, let's say I have my domain here, x, and my codomain here, y, and there exists some element here that f, f doesn't map to. F doesn't map to. F doesn't map to. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't make it to this element. Let's say I don't know, uh, w. So, suppose f is not on to. So. Let. Y, be in C. And suppose, suppose. There does not exist, suppose there does not exist an x in x such that f of x is equal to y. That is to say, we're showing, we, since f is not on 2, then we can certainly have a y in c such that f of x does not equal to y. So, excuse me. Such that f of x, so yeah, so there, there, we're showing that there is a y and c such that there, there does not exist any x and x such that f of x is equal to y. Now, if there does not exist an x and x such that f of x is equal to y, going back to our definitions up here, remember, if f of x, if there exists an x and x such that f of x is equal to y and where y is in c, then this implies, this implies that there does not exist an x in x such that f of x, excuse me, there does not exist an x in the inverse image of c under f such that f of x is equal to y. And why were we able to say this? Why, so if, if f of x is equal to y and y is in c, then this implies that f of x 
is in. So another way of saying this is there does not exist an x and x such that f of x is equal to y, where y is in c. So the, another way of saying that is there does not exist an x in the inverse image of, of, of c such that f of x is equal to y because there's no x. And remember, f, this set right here, this set right here is in x. So if there's no x in x such that f of x is equal to y, where y is in c, then there, there cannot possibly be an x in the inverse image of c since this, this set right here is in this is a subset of x, right? This is a subset of x, such that f of x is equal to y. And if there does not exist an x in some subset of x, um, excuse me, if there does not exist an x in some subset of big x, the, the domain x, such that f of x is equal to y, then remember, remember our definition of the image of a set. The image of a set A is all y in y, the codomain y, such that there exists an x in A such that f of x is equal to y. Now, we just told, I just told you here that there exists no plus x in the inverse image of C such that f of x is equal to y. So this implies that f of x is not in, is not an element of, is not an element of the image of the inverse image of C. Again, if it were, if f of x were in the image of the inverse image of c, that would have to mean, or excuse me, we could rather, we could say more precisely, we could say that y is not in the image, the inverse image of c. If y were in the image of the inverse image of c, that would mean there have to exist an x in the inverse image of c such that f of x equals y. But we just said, we just told you that there's, there exists no x in the inverse image of c because there exists no x in the inverse image, or there, there exists no x in the domain x such that f of x is equal to y, where y is in c. So there can't possibly be an x in the inverse image of c under f such that f of x is equal to y, which implies that y is not in, so, which implies that y is not in the image of the inverse image of c. And we've just disproven this statement right here. We've just disproven the statement because in order for this statement to be true, all x in C must also be in the image of the inverse image of C. But we just, we just derived it, we, we just contrived, or rather we, we concocted a particular F, a particular case where, where F is of, has a certain property where this property does not hold true. Where we, where we were able to find just one, we, we just found one X that was in C that was not also in the image of the inverse image of C, therefore disproving this entire property.